Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. Uh, today's video, we're gonna be doing a uh, tabletop comparison between two different versions of the Steiner uh, P4XI, the 1.4 power by 24. Um, I have two uh, of the P3TR reticles, and I just recently purchased a third one, but this one has the uh, G1 reticle. So I thought we would talk about a couple of the differences other than just the reticle. Um, I'm gonna try to get some actual live footage through the reticle using my cell phone and that is not easily done. But we'll see if we can make it work. So there's your G1, part number 5204. And these came with free throw levers. Speaking of throw levers, if you want your throw lever to um, end up on each side of the scope evenly. Line up your lever with the uh, the two. And then when you throw your lever, because it's about 180 80 degree travel, so that puts your lever um, at the uh, zero or 180 or 180 and zero. Uh, yeah, however you want to look at that. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is price. Um, I bought my first Steiner uh, P4XI about uh, probably over three years ago now from Battlehawk Armory and it was 468 and then about uh, probably within a year I bought the second one and it was about 520 and um, I'm seeing these things going for between eight and nine hundred dollars now and I'm like damn Steiner I mean, they're good scopes, but they ain't that good. So anyway, I've just decided that there's no way I'd pay that much. So I found this one, and it was on sale. It was a closeout sale from EuroOptic. They sent me a sales notification, and it was $549. So I'm thinking, okay, that's still a little bit more than, than what I wanted to pay for it, but close enough. So I jumped on it. Um, like I said, it was a closeout sale, and they put a little note on there saying once they're gone, they're gone. They're not going to stock them again. I don't know if Steiner's going to drop this reticle design, or it's just your optic deciding not to stock them anymore. So that part I don't really know. Okay, so let's get into the actual uh, kind of tabletop review here. Um, both of these have uh, night vision settings. And as soon as I find them, yeah, okay. So the circles with the holes in them, the donuts, that's your night vision. And then your low settings, I think there's 11 low settings. I'd have to go look. There's offs in between. Um, these scopes do not have shake awake and they do not have an auto power down. So if you leave it on, you're gonna drain your battery. Okay, so the Steiners with the uh, P3TR reticle, only the center dot is illuminated, it's red, and it is nuclear bright. I would say that it is daytime bright. Um, you can put this scope up against a white surface with uh, direct sunlight on it, and you'll still be able to make out the, uh, the illumination, so I consider these absolutely daytime bright. Now, um, like I said earlier in the video, I'm going to try to show you what the reticles look like with my camera. Um, the G1 reticle, I would say, is very usable, but it's not quite uh, daytime or, or, or daylight bright. Um, if you put it on a, uh, a very bright surface, um, like that house over there with direct sunlight on it, it'll it'll wash the reticle out. The illumination, not not the reticle. You can still see the reticle, just the illumination is what I meant to say. So the illumination with the G1 reticle isn't quite as bright. Okay, so the P3TR with the uh, basically the bullet drop uh, reticle is the adjustments are in half MOA. And the G1 reticle is in tenths of an M red. And 
that's what the turret looks like. And that's what that turret looks like. Okay, so how do the turrets feel? Um, they're mushy. If you turn them kind of quickly, you can feel the, uh, the detents. If you turn it slow, you're, you're gonna have a hard time picking them up. But generally on an LPVO, most people don't actually use these for their holdovers, they use the reticle. So once these are adjusted, you usually set them and forget them. But um, yeah, so that's one of the negatives is uh, mushy turrets. Okay, so I, I don't really think that this is necessarily a negative, but it's something you gotta watch out for. These battery compartment caps are on brutally tight and they are very difficult to get off because as you try to loosen that cap going in a counterclockwise direction, the illumination switch is gonna rotate into the stop. And I mean, this thing is on tight and they were all like that, every one of my uh, Steiners. And um, so what I did was I took a rubber band and wrapped it around the switch so that I could get a good purchase on it. So I had enough friction to get a, a really good hold on it and hold it steady and, and get that cap off. I think if you rotated this counterclockwise all the way until it hit the stop and you're just going to use the stop alone on the illumination switch, I think that these are on so tight, I, I think you're going to damage the stops or the switch. Now, I don't know that for a fact because I didn't try it out. But like I said, they were on tight enough to where I was afraid I was going to cause damage. Okay, so once I did get the battery cap off, what I did was I took a toothpick and I put a little bit of uh, silicone grease on the threads the O-ring, the outer O-ring, this rubber gasket on the inside, and just a tiny bit's all it takes. And that will make it so that you can get this off without feeling like you're gonna damage the switch. Okay, so here's the specs on the, uh, the P3TR reticle. And um, I could talk about it for a while, but I think it'd just be easier to scroll over this and if you guys are interested on how the uh, the reticle works. Um, down here at the bottom, you can see that they're recommending a 200 yard zero. So 50, 200 yards is what they're suggesting and they're giving you some velocity and some bullet weights and uh, telling you how the, the reticle works. And we'll flip to the actual specifications page where they show everything, eye relief, exit pupil, all that stuff. Okay, well, we're still talking about the uh, 5201, which is the P3TR reticle, bullet drop. And here's the specifications. Okay, so we're on the G1 reticle now, the new scope I just bought. And like I said, I'll scroll over the, the basic specs here. Um, they don't give you a zero recommendation on this because it's more of a ranging type reticle to get you out a little bit further at distance. So they're gonna let you decide what you should zero it at and what type of bullet and velocity and all that stuff you're gonna use. And then something I forgot to mention earlier in the video, um, all of these, my old ones are using shot glass and they were assembled in the US. And I'm assuming that the, the new one I just bought with the G1 reticle is the same, shot glass assembled in the US. Don't know that for a fact, but that would be my assumption. Okay, so besides the reticle design and the illumination not being quite as good as the P3TR reticle. Um, there is another difference between these scopes. And on the G1, it has a locking ring for your diopter. And my older Steiners, 
do not have a locking ring. So, I'm not sure why necessarily if you design this with the proper tension, you would need one, but I guess, I don't know. I guess it's kind of nice to have it. Why not? Better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Doesn't bother me. Added feature. Okay, so I'm using my GoPro now because I wanted to uh, do some recording on my iPhone. Um, last night I played around with this in uh, just regular normal video mode. And I tried uh, macro. I tried a lot of different things. And what was happening is, because I'm using a 13 Pro, it's got three lenses, telephoto, wide, and I think the other one's for macro. And all three of these lenses, when I tried to get behind the scope and uh, record some actual reticle footage, man, it was just mission impossible. I was able to do it, but I mean, it, it took me like half an hour of, of trying to figure out how to do it. So anyway, um, I used my wife's phone. She has a 6 Plus, and her camera seemed to do a little better on the reticle. Not as good as I wanted, but better. Well, then I noticed that my 13 Pro has a cinematic selection, which her camera did not. So I went and experimented with cinematic, and what I saw up here was this symbol here, and I go, man, that looks like an f-stop symbol. So I tapped it. Sure enough. It allows you to adjust the f-stop. So if you know a little bit about photography and changing the f-stop, you know how that changes your depth of field and your focus range. So I played around with it last night and I was able to get a nice clear reticle and a field of view that wasn't too bad. So we're gonna try using this again today with more light. But anyway, uh, this might be a feature that you're not familiar with on your newer iPhone. So anyway, uh, let's do some actual recording here and uh, see if I can get that reticle. Okay, so that's illumination in the shadow. Okay, so that's illumination on the uh, sunlit wall. It, it doesn't look like it's lit up because I've got the aperture turned way up to f16 which knocks the light down. Now it has an, this camera has an exposure setting too, so I could pull around and, and get it the same brightness. But anyway, that's, that's that full illumination. Okay, so that's the PTR3, and you can see that you can still see the dot. And like I said, that wall is lit up. I just have the aperture turned up so far on the camera. It makes it look like it's in the shade, but it's not. So I'll pop up real quick and we'll show you the wall. Okay, so that's what we were actually looking at. And that's the shadow. So you can see that the, uh, that the uh, P3TR performs much better as far as uh, daylight bright. I'm sorry about the camera work. Well, I only got one thing left to do, and that's uh, get the scope mounted. I'll be going with a uh, another American Defense. They become my favorite QD, and this one here has the standard levers, and I got a couple of them with the uh, the titanium levers. So. All right, Pete in North Las Vegas, over and out.